and welcome to another episode of the Winnipeg Business Podcast, where I bring in Winnipeg's finest businesses to share who they are, what they do, what makes them unique, and what you should look for when dealing with somebody within their industry. So without further ado, let's go. I'm your host, James, and with me today, we have Philip Jenkinson with Coney Canada, is it? Great, yeah. All right, and he will be our expert for today in the elevator industry. So without further ado, if you'd like to introduce yourself, Philip. Thanks, James. Yeah, um, I'm Phil. Most people can call me that. I'm from Kone, so it's a Finnish uh, family-owned company. So an easy way to remember how to say that is a cone, like a traffic cone, and uh, what does a horse say? Nay. There you go. <laughs> I, I really like that. Oh, yeah. sorry for pronouncing it wrong. Or... No, no, it's all good. It's just the way uh, I help people remember. But yeah, Kone is a, a family-owned company, and uh, and they've been in uh, Canada since uh, since the '90s. So uh, glad to be here and chat about uh, some of the things that we can help folks out with. Sure. Of course, thank you. There's just it's just so many things within the elevator industry. Like I have no idea where to start. All right, awesome. So, Philip, if you can just share with us five things that property managers should know prior to hiring a service uh, elevator service. Yeah, yeah. I mean, back when you and I started talking, it was uh, you know what kind of horror stories can we find? What kind of <laughs> what kind of scary stuff goes on? And uh, to be honest, I mean, not a lot in 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 our country. Uh, things are really safe. The, the regulatory bodies are there to, to help us with inspections. The elevator techs are out there doing their due diligence and maintenance every day. And then oh, uh, a part of that is, is going to be building owners like the building we're in today. It's up to them to sort of reach out and make sure they're responsible for their equipment. But uh, um, I guess the first thing is one of the popular items uh, when we're talking about inspections is is the permits. Um, so you're you're familiar with that. We were kind of chatting yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah, because with Cheryl Lashay, who is a celebrity in the city at this right. point, yeah. um, with her retiring and everybody still seeing her name in the elevators, is that is that still safe? We're okay with that? Yeah, well, it's it's kind of funny. I think she's got her own Instagram account yeah. or something. Somebody <laughs> Ace created. Burby made that happen. <laughs> right, right. No kidding. Okay, we didn't know that. But yeah, she's um, she was part of the department that helps inspect the elevators. I think she oversaw it at one point. But um, these things are expiring. Folks are seeing it, posting it. You know, my elevator's not safe. Look at when my permit expires. It's yeah. two years ago. It hasn't been inspected. And I guess it's cause for concern, but uh, we could shed some some light on it. Uh, behind the scenes, the the elevators themselves are actually maintained by an elevator professional. Whether that's a big company or a small, you'll have an elevator technician in there regularly doing what he needs to do to make sure that equipment is safe. So the first person that would tell you if an equipment is um, not isn't able to run uh, for the public's use, they'll shut it off. They'll tag it off. They'll have oh, their name on. So you don't need to necessarily worry about that permit. It's not the be all end all. The, the folks do inspect it regularly and then they have provide that licensing. But um, to be honest, I think they're actually moving away from even having that permit in the caps. Every other province oh. in Canada, you don't need it. Oh, really? It's just so Manitoba yeah. that they need one in the up. Yeah. Mm, We're kind nice. of behind. Yeah, <laughs> We're behind the times. So. Yeah, but uh, yeah. rest assured, things are for typically safe regardless of your permit. But um, I guess one thing that I wanted to share when, when the, you, you brought up, had the topic of, you know, why hire a pro mm -hmm. um, to take care of your equipment? Um, there's a lot of different things in the elevator industry that you really can't hire anyone else. But one of the items that a lot of clients ask me, uh, folks from out of town is, is a big one. Uh, when people get stuck, uh, have you ever been stuck in an elevator? No, but I always fear it whenever it shakes a little bit, I get a little worried. True. So it's, um, it's uh, for some folks, uh, not a big deal. Uh, they're aware of the situation for others, real scary. They, they don't want to be part of that. So um, when it comes down to letting people out of the elevator, a lot of clients out of town will say, can, can you uh, let me just open the door, the elevator door, and uh, I'll let the folks out. Can you help train me on, on how to do that? It's so easy. I see the guy come here. He just pops the door open. Yeah. Uh, why not? Why can't I do that? So um, that's another, uh, another thing that um, came back to me a few times. And, and I think, well, uh, or at least I share with them the... Uh, the, the opening of the door and the task of popping that uh, door open is quite simple and anyone could be trained on it easily. Mm -hmm. But uh, what happens and why did the elevator shut down in the first place? Chances are in a, in a circuit on an elevator, there's all kinds of safety mechanisms, uh, different things that uh, tell the elevator to shut down for, for a reason. It's not oh, like broken. It's a safety, it's a safety, safety mechanism. mechanism. Oh, okay. So why did it shut down? We mm -hmm. need to figure that out before we start opening doors and letting people out. Uh, yeah, properly sure. doing that and, and getting the people in and out is a big deal, but you need to have someone trained to, to do that for sure. So I know this is just like scary movies and stuff like that, but if somebody opens the door, can the elevator still move? It could. I mean, it all depends on the equipment. <laughs> Uh, some of the elevators nowadays will have a door restrictor is what's called so if you try to pull that door open you'll only get a couple inches <clears throat> excuse me and that'll push the door close you can't get out of it but i guess one of the scary things in movies is an elevator falling 
yeah. a lot of people <laughs> think of that. So uh, typically, uh, in, in that kind of equipment, in a, in a roped or cabled uh, piece of uh, piece of equipment, uh, that wouldn't happen. The elevator mm -hmm. would go up. So when an elevator is, is moving, when a traction elevator moves, it has what's called a counterweight. There's a big piece of metal uh, inside the hoistway that goes up and down with the elevator and it counterweights it. So if you ever go in an elevator, you look at the um, front of the car operating panel where the buttons are, it'll tell you the capacity. So that mm -hmm. those counterweights have that amount on them so that when there's people in the cabin, it goes like that. So if, if, if it was to fall, the counterweight weighs more than the car itself. So it would probably go up. Also, oh, that's never interesting. Also, it never would just, unless, it, I guess, unless a cable snaps. So could be, but it depends on where the cables snap. There's four or five cables on most equipment, maybe even oh. six or seven. It's really going to be um, something that will happen in our country anytime soon. Oh, so you don't have to thank you. Oh, that, man, that, really, <laughs> that really puts me at ease True. with high elevators. So, uh, is there anything else you'd like to share regarding? Yeah, I mean, one of the big things would be, um, would be, I guess, contracts. It's what our industry, or at least the maintenance side of things and what you and I are talking about, that's what it's really based on. So, um, you know, why hire a pro would be, um, you know, why are they there and what are they doing? So, uh, what I like to bring up with a lot of clients is uh, be aware of your contract and what's included. A lot of times, you can't do anything to that equipment uh, other than the person that's maintaining it for you. And there's a good reason for that. It depends on the scope, but for the most part, the contracts include the liability on the elevator contractor side, as well as the building owners. So something I, I represent as a partnership um, more frequently than not, because it is. It's not our equipment, it's the owner's equipment. So inside that agreement has a lot of um, writing stating that no one else can do any work on that equipment but the person maintaining it. Because what if you had um, you had responsibility handyman. for a handyman or, <laughs> or um, it, it could be uh, um, tons of different scenarios that mm -hmm. comes up. But the point is that the elevator company standing behind it, they're responsible for it. So they don't want anybody going around doing, making any changes because if something happens, they go, what, what's this, who did that? Why yeah. is that? And then when you're troubleshooting or when you're letting someone out of an elevator, you need to be aware of what was done and what wasn't done to make sure that you're there to fix it for sure. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you guys had contracts preventing people from actually like tinkering. I was yeah. not worried that the handyman will tinker in there. Okay. It could. I mean, it's the owner's equipment. But mm -hmm. um, uh, another point would be uh, uh, another reason I, I think would be the transparency provided. So, uh, why would you hire an elevator company, or why would you hire a pro, someone that's uh, that's that's there for you? Would be as opposed to the handyman, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, the the pros will have transparency in what, what we're doing and. Uh, we'll show you when we're coming to do uh, the maintenance, what we're including in the maintenance, what we're not, mm -hmm. as well as budget planning. What can you use in the next five years as far as budgets go to upgrade the elevator, to deal with safety items, to deal with code related items. You should be able mm -hmm. to have that framework. So the reason you go to a professional company is to, to get the full circle. They're not just there oh, to fix it, sure. right? They're not just there to let you out. Well, and it's peace of mind too, to know that you have the report saying like, this is what we did, everything's safe, you're good to go. Like, oh, that's a lot of peace of mind. Hundred percent. So you, whenever you talk about AI, you always have to say, "Oh, it's the best. It's awesome." <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh huh. AI right. is the best. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Or they'll come after you. Cool. Oh, well, well, thanks true. for having me. Thank you so much. And um, if you want to just share how people can get in contact with you. Yeah, I think the guys will put the email on there. Um, That's his email right there down below. Yeah, shoot me a, shoot me an email. Any kind of questions about safety, contract talk, artificial intelligence. Uh, you know, I'm here. Nice. Well, thank you so much for coming out. Appreciate it. Um, well, that's all we have for today. Thank you guys for watching. Till next time, go with the pro. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Winnipeg Business Podcast. If you know anyone you think would make a perfect guest for the show, please send them to the Winnipeg Business Podcast.com. Have them fill out the form and someone from our team will get back to them ASAP. Till next time.